So I'll start with a little story is that to kind of get us familiar with the area that we're going into is that the, in the, the Eastern Arcs or Asian Arcs, when they're doing their studies, they take a piece of the master and they repeatedly copy it and trying to get closer and closer to being able to duplicate what the master does. Is this a movement? A movement? It could be in movements and it's also in the arts. In the calligraphy? Like calligraphy or sunni, the painting. So this is a story about this uh, master painter in his class and he had this student for years and the student was trying to copy this bamboo uh, piece with bamboo leaves and one of the leaves was bending down. Right? So he's doing it repeated, repeatedly for years and, then, and, and improving. And finally he got to the point where he thought that he had it exact. Oh. Right? So he looked at his bamboo leaf, looked at compared it to the master bamboo leaf, and this is the same. So he goes to the master and says, look, I think I've got it. Look at this, this leaf. The master looks at it and says, that's good. Keep continuing. You're getting close. And then the student got a little perturbed at the master and said, no, you're wrong. This is exact. Mm -hmm. Right? So the master just looked at the student and said, uh, you don't understand. This is not the same. And the student says, all right, you draw one of these leaves then if you think you can do better. So the master gets his brush, paints the leaf, and the student looks at the master's leaf, puts it next to his leaf. He says, they look the same. What do you mean? He says, they look the same. And the master says, no, no, they're, they're completely different. <laughs> and then the student, very disrespectfully, I might say, says to the master, well, you tell me, what's different? They look the same. And the master looks at the student and says, my leaf is ready to spring back up. And that's what we're, and that's the giftedness. It's to make that look leaf look like it's going to spring so back. So it didn't look stagnant. Up. It looked like he was hit it in bed, but it was about to to, to come back up. Mm -hmm. right? So there was an energy flow there mm -hmm. somehow that de depicted it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll see like the bird that's uh, alighting onto a branch. Right? And you know it's coming down because there seems to be this motion in the down. Mm -hmm. right? And it's like, well, how do you put that in? Or how can you look at uh, a painting of a face like the Mona Lisa? And is it a smile? Is it a grin? Is it mischief? What mm -hmm. is it? And yet, if you look at that Mona Lisa, you, you notice she's holding her breath. Oh. Right? But then if you look at another painting, in most paintings, you see the people are breathing in. They're not holding their breath. Mm -hmm. We were in this uh, Roman, old Roman Catholic church in Philadelphia. And they have a lot of statues. And every statue but one, the person was breathing in. Interesting. If you look in the, uh, the Greek sculptures, too, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You'll notice they're portraying, most of the time, an in-breath. It's not static. It's not holding the breath. It's not an exhale. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, now, how can you put that feeling of energy into something? even when you're working in two or three dimensions, because this is another dimension, and yet it is there. So, so this is beyond three dimensions. What so we're talking doing? about something different, okay. right? Okay. And it, but it's there, and people are doing it. So once we think about it, then we see it, right? So, so first we have to be aware it's there, and then we begin to see these things. So as we continue, we're going to get on, in on uh, 
projecting from different areas. Uh, we're, and we'll be working with a lot of different visualizations too, because that's a, another dimension that we can pass on. So it becomes technical, but it's the technical aspect aspect of what is making expression, or it might be the technical aspect of what is making connective uh, a connectiveness. And so uh, sometimes when a person is performing a particular piece that makes people cry. You can feel it in that person. So how does that happen? But we know it does. Right? Or the joyful. Or joy. So what we want to do is see how are these things created? Well, we don't have it created. It's within us as people. But then how are they conveyed? And can we be able to manipulate these things or develop these things. So it turns out that our method that we're going to do is first we have to feel it and have it within ourselves. And what do you mean by it? We have okay. to have the, the dynamics and the energy within ourself. The dynamics and the energy it has to be within ourself so we can be aware of it, of what it feels like. So if you never felt extreme sorrow, you can't portray extreme sorrow. But if you know extreme sorrow, and you look at somebody grieving, you know what that person is feeling. Right? So what we're going to be doing all along is first we're going to develop it or feel it within ourselves, and then if it's natural, and part of us, is, of, of us as humans, then as soon as we do it in the correct manner, then something should happen. Because it's just dynamics. Right? You do it, and you get the, the result. So we're going to first work on ourself, so we can then do it. So what I'm saying is, the master that made the leaf look like it's bent and ready to spring back up, could feel that. And now how did he put it into that drawing to make it look like it was ready to spring up? So what I'm saying is that he could, he could feel it. He became that leaf. Mm. And somehow there's this dynamics of energy that is on that when he does something or paints it, puts that energy or that feeling into it. So it's just like looking at the work of a great master in the art history book, mm -hmm. and then going up to the museum and seeing the real thing. There's a difference of dynamics that are approaching, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get to know ourselves in a different way and start to work with different energy dynamics in new or different ways. And we're going to then apply that to the music for expression or connectedness. And our bodies are just wonderful things. We were marvelously created, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so we're going to just begin with just a typical movement. And we'll just use a stepping movement you're stepping back and forth, so we'll just move to the side a little bit. And just and we're just stepping forth like we normally do. And then we'll step with different types of energy dynamics. Okay. Right? And the easiest one to learn will be we'll step with an inhale or step with an exhale and see what a, a holding your breath does. Mm -hmm. Because breathing is energy. Mm -hmm. Right? And then we'll see what that does. And then we'll see how some of the dynamics of our different muscles work too. And then, and then see how breathing in or out or holding our breath affects the dynamic of different muscle pairs. Mm 